But I'd never move. I love this. Oh, there's the newsboy. Never misses our porch. Except when it rains, then he throws it on the roof. <laughs> hey, George. Oh, that's our next door neighbor, Harry Morton. George. Excuse me. Yes, Harry, what is it? Your paper's here. <laughs> on radio, I could have done this entire bit sitting on a chair. <laughs> but you know, getting back to Harry Morton, he loves football. Two to one, he turns right to the sports section. Bronco Wojciechowski's not going to start tonight, Blanche, and I bet on state. Oh, say, Harry, I forgot to tell you. Uh. George and Gracie are going to the football game with us. Oh, no, not Gracie. What's wrong with Gracie? Have you any idea what poor George takes from her? No, but I bet it's a pretty penny. <laughs> Why don't you stop with that? George could be a success without Gracie. Yeah, uh -huh. like Edgar Bergen without Charlie McCarthy. There's a silly comparison, Blanche. Bergen works with a dummy, and George works... <laughs> okay, you win that point. Anyway, she doesn't know anything about football, Blanche. She couldn't pick the winner if Notre Dame was playing Vassar. This year, who could? <laughs> Besides which, you're not such an expert yourself, you know, Harry. You're forgetting that I played for Flushing A&M. Oh, no, Harry, I remember. Yeah, will you ever forget the big game? <laughs> what a day. 40,000 people in the stands yelling, Give us Speedy! Put in Speedy! We want Speedy! <laughs> so they took you out and put in Speedy. <laughs> well, I wasn't in condition. The night before, I was up until 2 o'clock in the morning waiting for your folks to go to bed. So, so we could neck. They should have put Speedy in then, too. <laughs> very, very funny. Can I read the paper? Go you ahead, mind go ahead, I like to read in. the paper. Come in. It's me, Blanche. Oh, in here, Gracie. The tax assessor didn't stay very long. Oh, hello, Harry. Hello, Gracie. The tax assessor didn't stay long. No, I saw him when he left your house. He... He had a sort of a dazed look on his face. Well, it must be the weather, Blanche. Almost everybody I talk to has that same look. I'll drink to that. Oh, say, look at that ad. There's a big sale with bullets. Oh, Harry, do you mind if I cut it out? I want you to, oh, Gracie. All right. Oh, I love their linens. They have the most wonderful linens. I wish it was a coat sale. We're going to the football game, and I'm wearing a coat that's five years old. Don't worry about it, Blanche. Nobody will see you. Hmm. Probably won't put you into the third quarter anyway. <laughs> there we are. Here we are, Harry. Thanks. Thanks. <sighs> oh, there's a piece of your tablecloth, Blanche. Oh, you used that to cover the hole. <laughs> oh, Blanche, you're there. Uh, yeah. Oh, don't bother, Blanche. I'll open it on my way out. Oh, thanks, Gracie. Bye. 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 Yes? I beg your pardon. No! <laughs> Bye, Bye. 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 I better see what she wants. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, if I got to make this trip again, Gracie will have to get herself a younger straight man. And now while I'm catching my breath, I want you to meet a charming girl with a beautiful, beautiful voice, Miss Ellen Hanley. Dream, saw a new face. 
I think it's time to put a little plot in the show. And uh, we try to strike a happy medium. We have more plot than a variety show and not as much as a wrestling match. <laughs> so here goes. Music, curtain, and plot. Bill, this is Gracie. Oh, I'm in such trouble, Bill. Look, I came home from the beauty shop, I drove home, and I noticed a dent in the fender. And if George sees it, he'll never let me drive the car again. And, and, well, I want you to come over and borrow the car from George and have it fixed before he finds out about it. Yes. Oh, well, bring Miss Jones along with you. Oh, thank you, Bill. Goodbye. Yeah, that's it. That's the plot. <laughs> What'd you expect, Shakespeare? <laughs> I'll tell you something about plot, but don't tell this to Ed Sullivan or Eddie Cantor. It's cheaper than guest stars. <laughs> and another thing about plot. You don't have to worry about billing. George! Oh, here I go again. Pardon me. Yes, Gracie? George, what would you like for dinner? There's some wonderful recipes in the Carnation Cookbook. Well, anything you fix will be delicious. <laughs> you know, Gracie, I thought of something today that you will never remember. What? I owe you, I still owe you $3. No, dear, it's $8. I gave you 10 the day we were married. <laughs> <laughs> well, what'd you do today? Well, I went to the beauty shop and I met Clara Bagley. She was going to the doctor's, so I was along with her. Well, that was very nice of you. But the minute I got in the doctor's office, I knew he was no good. You knew he was a bad doctor? Yeah, all his patients were sick. <laughs> <laughs> You're very observing. Yeah, oh, here's a good one. Have you got a pencil? There's a pencil on the back table. All right. He had a beautiful blonde nurse, and even she was sick. She was sick, yeah, too. Yeah, she kept begging him to take out her appendix. The nurse wanted her appendix taken out? Yeah, every time she went into his private office, I could hear her saying, Now, doctor, please cut it out. <laughs> uh, what was the matter with Clara that she had to go see a doctor? Well, I think it was to have the dents taken out of her knee. She had dents in her knee? Yes, because every time uh, I looked in the office, he was pounding them out with a little rubber hammer. <laughs> I'll explain that to you later. You got a piece of paper? There's some paper on the, uh, the oh. table there. So while she was in the doctor's office, I was in the waiting room and I cheered up all the patients. I knew that you would. Oh, but... and where do I tell you? There was one poor little boy sitting all by himself and he looked so sad. So I brought him around and made everybody shake hands with him. And that made him feel better. Yeah, well, he almost forgot he had the measles. <laughs> <laughs> Your friendliness was very contagious. Yes, I helped the nurse, too. I answered the phone for her. I see. Someone called up and wanted to know if a man 85 years old could have rickets. Hmm. And I said, oh, sure, let him have all he wants, as long as you choose him well. 
<laughs> you were a real big help down there yes. today. Yes. You got a pencil? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll get it for you. You're liable to forget the book. Oh, and then there was a doctor in the next office whistling. And this, uh, this doctor was whistling? Yes, and the nurse said that that was Dr. Brown, the famous obstetrician. I see. She said that last year he had 260 babies. And I said, well, I bet his wife isn't whistling. <laughs> what are we having for dinner? Oh, I've got something wonderful. Wait till you see it right there. Oh, yes. Well, I'll just write it down. Oh, yeah. right there. Now, you answer the, floor, uh, the, the door and let uh, Bill and his girl in. How do you know it's Bill and his girl? Were you expecting them? No, but then my mother wasn't expecting me either, but here I am. <laughs> you see, honey, Gracie dented the fender, so I'm supposed to borrow the car and get it repaired before George finds out. We'll only be here a couple of minutes, okay? Well, Gracie was right. Huh? Nothing. Come on in. Oh, thanks. George, meet Miss Jones. How do you do, Miss Jones? It's nice to say hello, Willie. Hi, George. It's always a pleasure.